Right, so today I want to talk about vintage axe handles versus modern axe handles. So I've addressed this a lot in the past and uh, probably done it to death, but uh, I still keep getting comments about this sort of thing, so I want to address it. So I want to start out by addressing the difference between European axe handles and American axe handles. So some European axes have um, slip fit eyes where the handle has to pass through the axe eye rather than being wedged in, such as the Basque axes. Their axes have to have quite a large axe eye so the handle can actually go through it um, and still leave a substantial size. So for that reason, their axe eyes are a lot larger. A lot of other European axes though still have a large eye, such as these uh, German or Austrian ones. You can see here, comparatively, the eye size is much larger for a similar sized axe. In short, I think that's because of the materials available. Traditionally, European axes have always used ash, beech, and sometimes certain types of birch. Uh, much softer woods than hickory, much weaker. They still make really, really good handles, but they're not as strong as um, hickory, meaning that a lot of the time I think they deliberately made them a bit thicker to account for that. On a Nash handle though, I don't think it really matters too much. Um, this is a Nash handle. I used it a lot before I thinned it down, and before I thinned it down it was really, really, really big. But um, now that I've thinned it down it's a lot better. But even then, when it was thick, the ash material, I think, absorbs shock a lot better than hickory. With hickory you can make a much thinner handle that's stronger, but uh, I think you have to thin down hickory to make it actually uh, good for chopping. This is a beach handle on a Basque racing axe. These are extremely thin and uh, again I've used beach a lot as an axe handle material on some of my Italian axes and particularly the Basque axes. I think beach is the most um, shock transmitting of the three between hickory, ash and beach but uh, it's still a good axe handle material you just need to have it quite thin I think. With ash in particular I think that the quality of the ash is super super important. Um, you'll get a lot of ash that's maybe been cut down and is a bit old and it goes very very brittle. So ash does tend to have much greater issues with quality control and it, I think that's really why you'll see them traditionally a lot thicker. Now the big problem with modern axe handles in Europe I'd say is a lot of European makers have switched to using hickory as a material but they've not changed the handle design. So you end up with these massively thick hickory handles that uh, you'd probably get away with using ash for shock absorption, but as a hickory handle, they're absolutely nightmares to use for transmitting shock and uh, causing injury. <clears throat> so for the rest of the video, I'm just gonna really focus on hickory handles and uh, thickness. So really when I'm saying thick handles are a big problem um, in videos of talking about how they cause shock and whatever, this is the kind of handle I'm talking about. This is a Granfers Bucks American Felling X handle, 32 straight. Other companies that also produce similarly thick handles are Holterfors. They come very, very thick. Um, basically all the Swedish axes. Most of the German axes um, come quite thick. The Oxenkopf's are a little bit thinner than the Granfers, I think. But the worst offender of all is definitely Helco's Tasmanian axe. That thing is truly monstrous, like it's almost double the thickness of this Grandsfitz, which is just insane. Handles like this are just an absolute nightmare to use. I remember the first uh, time I took part in the Cornwood Challenge. I watched uh, Stephen Ed Holmes' video on handle shock and, uh, you know, at the time I was naive. I hadn't experienced it and um, I thought it was mostly just uh, overstated, you know, making a problem out of nothing. And boy, I was wrong. The first day I went out there, I went out with a Oxenkopf's uh, Hartzer axe and I uh, chopped for three hours. And this isn't even as thick a handle as the Grandsfors. And afterwards, my hands were so crippled I could barely like open and close them. It felt like I'd been boxing. And um, yeah, <laughs> then for sure the next time I was out, I had that handle thinned right down, um, as Stephen said. So, 
you know, if you don't believe me, go out and shop for three, four, five, six, maybe even ten hours and see how you get on. That's not the only occasion I've experienced that, where your hands are, feel like you've been punching a brick wall. Um, often I'll take an act out that I've just put onto the handle and I'm excited about trying it out and seeing how it's cutting and I'm not thinned it down yet. And I did that once with this exact same handle um, on a five pound wetterling's head I'd hung. And uh, literally after five minutes, my elbow was absolutely trashed. Um, it took like three weeks to heal and I was chopping some quite hard wood. And that's why I will say the shock you feel isn't just down to the handle. There's other things that come into play, such as if your axe is cutting better, so it's not bouncing off the wood, um, then you'll feel less shock because it's slowing down uh, slower. The energy spread out over a longer time period. Other factors, uh, your axe head weight, um, how hard you're swinging, how hard the wood you're chopping is. All these factors are gonna come into play on how much energy you feel transmitted into the handle. But for general use, you want a handle that's nice and thin so it flexes and absorbs some of the shock. So after five minutes, um, I'd really trashed my arm. And it, I wasn't just five minutes chopping, I was using our axes at the same time and stuff, but uh, yeah, it was definitely that handle that caused that. I've experienced the same sort of chopping uh, injuries doing big log challenges and I was one time chopping a really really um, dry old piece of beach and that was really nasty and even with a thin beach handle afterwards I was pretty sore. If you think about it it's like sort of like radiation exposure it's not just how high the dosage is it's how long it's spread over and it's something that your mileage may vary it's not a hard and fast rule but what I will say is you definitely want to thin down your handle till it's comfortable and that you're not experiencing any problems like that because you really shouldn't. Guys used to do 10 hour days, day in, day out, um, and uh, get on with that job for years. And if they were using thick handles like this, they wouldn't have lasted a quarter of a day. So it's definitely a thing you'll see is in old photos, is guys using very, very thin handles also, manufacturers used to make the handles a lot thinner. It seems to be a trend that manufacturers make the handles thicker because I think it causes less problems when manufacturing the axe because it's less likely to get broken in the process of making it. It's probably uh, cheaper to do a thick handle. And uh, also, at the end of the day, the majority of customers buying axes have no clue. And... Uh, when they do break an axe handle, they're just going to complain and say it was the fault of the maker for producing a crap handle. And they'll demand that they make it thicker and therefore more, more robust. And that's what manufacturers are going to do is because the bottom line is there's only a few people in the world who take chopping seriously. And there's a horde of um, people who just use it for wood splitting and uh, are very careless in how they use their axe. So, as I said, a thick handle like this is absolutely disastrous if you're going to go out chopping with it. And if anyone disagrees, I challenge you to go out and cut for six hours and tell me how you feel afterwards. And even if you do have elbows of titanium and whatever, what is the point? Why not thin it down and make it more comfortable because it's just going to improve your experience. So here's a very similar handle thin down to my specifications as a good chopping axe. This is uh, a Smedberg's handle as well, so it originally came essentially the same thickness as this because I think the Grandson's handles are made by Smedberg's. But uh, we're a little bit thinner on the side profile, but, but if you see here, it's, it's literally like half the thickness, if not more. And that's a, a fantastic size of handle for me. Um, I've not got small hands, this is another thing. It's nothing to do with your hand size, what thinness your handle should be. It's more to do with the shape. I like quite a, a thin, flat handle. 
and uh, yeah, I find this really comfortable. So for me, this handle is optimal size for an endurance chopping axe. So if we take a look at a racing axe handle, this is a Tuatai handle. I've not modified it at all. And a guy was saying that he found this handle to be very comfortable. And it is very comfortable. It's a, a very, very good handle. Tuatai make excellent axes. However, I think the argument he was making was that this handle is optimal. Um, that doesn't apply to endurance chopping. These axes are designed mostly for competition where you're chopping for a few minutes at a time in a day uh, at most. I think they are still slightly too thick as an endurance chopping axe. The side profile is the same as my axe I use for endurance chopping, but it's uh, a little bit thicker the other way. Hard to see, but you know, it's, it's pretty pretty close, but still not quite as thin. The two eye handle for me is just slightly too big for me to fully close my hand and not like squeeze it tight like that. I mean, have a comfortable closed grip. And what I mean by that is if you look at this handle here, I'm very loose grip, but it's still closing my hand. I find that when you have a slightly looser grip and you're not death gripping it, you're going to decrease the amount of shot going into your hand as well. You obviously don't want to be letting the thing fly at your hands, but on a two tie handle, sometimes these thin handles can roll in your hand. So when you strike the wood at slightly wrong angle, they want to twist in your hands. And that's no good for competition. In competition, you're not too worried about shock. Obviously, it might be a consideration, but uh, in competition, you want to be able to ensure that you're 100% efficient. And any errors like the axe rolling on strike is going to really aff affect your performance. So you, don't, you want to have it a little bit thicker for control reasons. On an endurance axe where you're chopping for hours and hours, you want to have it more tuned for preventing shock. So while two tie handles are very good, I've never had a problem using two tie, but uh, I think if you can chop with one of these, and I mean chop as in like you're not chopping at one log and then having an hour break and then chopping another log. I mean as in like working constantly for six hours. If you can actually do that, well, I'm not going to believe you, but uh, if you actually genuinely can chop with a five and a half, six pound axe for six hours without having excessive breaks, well, if you really, really, really insist that you can, you should sign up to uh, a Basque competition because those guys, despite being incredibly fit chopping 20 beach logs and then running 10 kilometers, they don't use five and a half or six pounds. They use four pounds to three and a half. So this is a bias racing axe handle and you can see, again, a competition axe, but because it's, <clears throat> because it's designed for endurance, it's still quite similar in the side profile, but it is a lot thinner the other way. Like right, especially down at the palm swell. Sometimes an axe with a really thick palm swell, again, your hands are a bit more open and uh, I find that that can transmit a bit of shock as well. So this is a endurance competition axe and you can see it has more in common with one of my work axes. Okay, so now I wanna show you some um, old vintage axe handles and how thin they are compared to the modern sort of standard. When you look at old photos, you can quite clearly see they're not using giant clubs like this but uh, quite thin handles. Here I have a couple of uh, original Elwell axe handles. Um, this one came off a six pound axe and this one came off a four and a half pound. So heavy axes, not uh, boys axes. And yet, again, they have quite a lot of common with my work axe handles. My work axe handles are a little bit thinner and I'm sure that uh, Loggers would have thinned down the handles at the factory, but these are factory. You can still see, it says Elwell right there, 
And this one has a, an LL stamp as well. So you can see that they've not scraped off any material of these. So these are absolute factory handles. I think this one was 1964, it said on the head, so quite old, but not uh, outrageously old. And again, these have more in common with my uh, work X handle. They're very thin down. I can close my hand comfortably without having to death grip it. Just uh, leagues above the standard of modern axes. This one was damaged, so I repurposed it into a picaroon handle. And it's very, very nice because of the large palms throughout. It really allows you to grip and drag logs really easy. But again, I'll show you the difference. So this is a, remember, the thinner handle was intended for a four and a half pound axe, whereas the thick Grandsworth handle is intended for a three and a half pound axe. And it's, uh, again, about half the thickness. And here, a six pound axe handle. And it's a little bit thicker than the four and a half, but uh, considering that the axe is meant to be for a double the weight axe, the Grandfather's is still absolutely ridiculous in comparison. And uh, here is a original Eagle Edge tool company, also known as Braids or Elwell. They had the same manufacturers normally. Um, yeah, this. Uh, this is a boy's axe, about a two and a half pound head. I know this is obviously a two and a half pound head compared to a three and a half pound head handle, but again, about half the thickness this way and a hell of a lot thinner this way as well. So the only real company that produces affordable axes with handles about this thin, they're still a bit thicker, is Council Tool. So it can be done for a very reasonable price and uh, I wish more manufacturers would make the handles a bit thinner to begin with but uh, I don't mind it too much on a cheap axe because you can modify it and thin it down to your taste and to produce something really nice. I'm just going to put up uh, some pictures of old loggers and I want you to consider that uh, the only real people I see defending extremely thick handles tend to be people who uh, are big fans of companies like Grandfather's Bucks and they, they can't handle criticism and uh, yeah all I'm trying to do when I criticize this axe handle is tell them that uh, this axe handle is going to hurt you if you ever actually need to rely on this axe and use it for an extended period of time and uh, honestly I've experienced it I doubted it at the start a lot of you guys won't realize this but I've not just came onto this channel with dogmatic opinions. Um, a lot of the stuff I was doing before I started filming on YouTube was hands-on learning and uh, making mistakes. Um, I still make mistakes but uh, I was making a lot more back then and um, you know I doubted people like Stephen Ed Home and uh, the books and whatever and I tried it out and I found out that often yes they were they were bang on the money so after experiencing those injuries and discomfort and all that, um, there's not a shadow of doubt in my mind that you must thin your axe handle. You must, if you want it to be a comfortable and efficient tool to use. Because after all, the biggest impact on efficiency is downtime due to injury. So I would encourage you, if you have any doubts about this, is to rather than comment some kind of like physics based idea or theory is to go out and shop for six hours try and do ten but uh when you get into the sort of like the three four five six hour ballpark that's when you're going to start to see problems occurring and especially if you're chopping harder woods and uh that sort of thing and if you, you still don't have any problems well you may just be more of a resistant to injury but uh you know keep at it and see see how long it takes because you will start to get problems I can guarantee that it's kind of like uh, smoking a cigarette and saying I never got lung cancer well it, it's you know down the road and uh, wh why would you want to keep it thicker I, I don't understand 
I'd, with a handle this thick, where I can't actually close my hand, I'd say there's far less control than a thin down handle such as a tuatai, because when your hand can actually close, then you're gripping it properly. When your hand's open, there's less resistance. You know, like if you, if you have your your hand closed and someone's trying to grab something out of your hand, like some car keys or something, it's much harder to pull your fingers apart and prise them open when it's gripping properly. Whereas if it's open, like half open like that, it doesn't, it's, it's much easier. Do you know what I mean? There's an optimal size of handle for your hand to grip to full strength. And I don't think having a massively thick handle does that. So handle shock isn't really something that I've only experienced and seen other people today experience. Some, I've also got some books which also talk about it, only briefly, but uh, I think it's pretty clear. Now something I will say is when you look at older sources, you will see sometimes and talk about handle shock and stuff like that. However, I will say that um, using the absence of evidence as evidence doesn't really work. So I saw a guy commenting and saying that um, because some guys like New Zealand uh, competition wood choppers never mentioned handle shock in a five minute video that therefore you know I was wrong because that uh, <clears throat> you know they were far more experienced than me. Again that's competition axemen not endurance choppers or uh, lumberjacks or people who chop for more than six hours in a day um, so yeah you can't really use that as evidence and also Especially in a five minute video, they're not going to cover absolutely everything. That's physically impossible. They didn't talk about bit length or um, how wide the axe is and all that sort of thing. So, you know, anyway, what I will say is when you look at old axe manuals, as I've shown, old axes are thinner on the handles. So you're not really going to see that much issue with them as you will see using one of these big, thick as fuck Grandfather's handles. And at the time of their publishing, the handles were thinner and more comfortable. So you're not going to experience stuff as badly. Even up till about 90, here's a 1977 Gilpin axe made for the government. And uh, again, it's got a really nice thin handle. So that's as late as 1977, at least. Absolutely nothing in common with the Swedish poor quality fit candle. So I've got these two sources here and we'll see what they have to say. These were published uh, well before Granfers became popular. So what he says, a good handle should feel comfortable to the hand, being neither too thin nor too thick. The handle must be slim enough to not jar with hard hits but it's not too slim as to flex too easily. If the handle is too round and cross section it is awkward to hold and gives a poor indication of where a leading edge of the hip blade should be. Hence, to a tie's thin flat handle. So what he's saying here is that the handle must be thin enough so you don't get handle shock or otherwise jar jars with hard hits. And uh, he does say not so slim as to flex too easily. So, but not so slim as to flex too easily. Um, like when you're pulling out the cut and that's something, when you bite into the wood deep, you don't want a handle that's gonna bend really, really far and you're not gonna be able to pull the axe head out. So again, that's another reason why two tie probably uses a bit thicker than what I would use. Because your ax the axes and racing axe, <clears throat> the axe heads for racing are ground really thin. They bite it right up to the handle. So if you do get a stuck axe, they can have a tremendous amount of pressure holding that axe head in. But uh, even as thin as this, I don't have problems pulling this out of the wood. In particular, ash handles, when you thin them down really far, they can be really, really flexible. And um, yeah, you definitely don't want to have it so flexible that it's like a bow and you can wiggle it around and um, you want a bit of flexibility. You don't want an axe that's hard to pull out of the wood because that is just going to be a real big annoyance. 
but it does say not to jar the hands and that's what I experienced using thick handles is it feels like you've been punching a brick wall. Dudley Cook I think was published a bit earlier um, so he doesn't have too much on handle shock but I'll read anyway. A good axe must have a good handle. Of the number of features affecting handles four must be listed as conditions for an efficient axe. The bit of the axe must be in line with the handle, the length of the handle must be suited to the user and work to be done. A total length of about 30 inches will accommodate most requirements for cutting your own firewood today. One of my favourite axes, 30 inches. You really don't need a 32 or 36. 32 is about the hard limit of what makes a good all-rounder axe. 36 is, I don't really have much use for. Beware of a too stiff a handle. It is both less efficient and excessively tiring to use a stiff handle for long. It will pound you to pieces. Last, the axe must be hung so that the centre of the bit faces the work. All these requirements will be more examined more in chapters 23 and 24. Professional woodsmen who swung their axes all day would not have tolerated club bike axe sandals. If that's not a club, I don't know what it is not have tolerated club-like axe handles if there had been any alternative. The incessant pounding of a stiff handle would have been too great. So just looking at those two books you get quite a clear picture that what they're saying is in line with what I've been saying and what Stephen has been saying and all these other people taking part in the Corwood Challenge have found to be very important and that's that handles can be far too thick and cause injury. <laughs> so Sorry if this has gone on too long and been quite long-winded, but uh, I thought it was a, worth addressing. This is obviously a lot more to axe handles than meets the eye, no pun intended. But um, yeah, when you're looking for a quality axe and want to set up a really efficient tool, you know, the head gets a lot of attention, but uh, often it's the handle that uh, makes the biggest difference on which axe you actually enjoy using more. At the end of the day, it's, it's a system of parts and uh, when one system is shit, the rest of the axe falls, falls flat. 